Mr. Ashish Gandekar, Council Member of Jerson Urban Group. Mr. Ashish, can we have a speech, please? The energy has gone down. Can I have a big round of applause for this? As a first panelist, we have Mr. Girish Lavale, Chief Technology Officer of CP Technologies Limited. And second panelist, we have Mr. Manoj Sepal, Director, Design and Development, Equinix. <laughs> the third panelist, we have Mr. Gyan Sinha, Head of IT, Sugar and Power Business, Bajaj Group. <laughs> and I get the best for, uh, best for the last, uh, we have Mr. Mahesh Trivedi, Senior Executive Vice President, Data Center, NTD Global Data Centers and Cloud Infrastructure in India. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Mr. Nadekar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Athira. Yeah. Thank you, Athira. Uh, so, here we stand between you and the drinks. <laughs> We have a tight schedule, so we will not carry on for more. I have a power pack panel, and uh, before we start, I first want to introduce all of them. So, I am requesting all of you, starting from Girish, to be introducing himself and up to Mayesh. So, Girish, yeah. you introduce yourself. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, uh, Girish Dawe. I am uh, Chief Technology Officer for uh, CIFI Technologies. Uh, so, I am uh, uh, 25 years into data center operations, data center services, and uh, CIFI Technologies is uh, currently having 11 data centers across Pan India with 90 megawatt is the operational load, and uh, we are now building 250 megawatt and plan for 450 megawatt additional. So, growing very fast. Uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Yeah. Hi. Uh, Good evening everyone, I'm Manoj Sembar, uh, I'm from Equinix. I take care of the design for the APAC region for Equinix data centers. Equinix is also called the uh, world's digital infrastructure company. Yeah, so that's about it. Good evening everyone, my name is Gyan Sana. Uh, I'm leading the IT team for the Daz group in the power and the sugar industry. And uh, I'm basically from the enterprise side of this panel discussion. Um, I'll be talking more of the user's perspective. User perspective. Hello, good evening everyone. Uh, this is Mahesh Trivedi. I represent NTT. Uh, I'm the senior vice uh, executive president there. I'm looking after the design, build of uh, and operations of data centers. NTT is uh, into uh, hyperscale and enterprise data centers and cloud infra uh, globally. We are present in around 29 countries and uh, yeah, we are growing very fast in India as well. We are at present operate around 200 megawatts, which we are planning to double in the next three years. Thank you. So thank you. Uh, as Athira said, uh, I have been into the industry since the last uh, 30 years, primarily focusing initially on power systems, going on to IT side and then of course with automation and compacts. So, here we are going to talk more on a concept which is necessary for the growth or maybe for sustenance of data centers. Sometime back when I was actually being interviewed, <coughs> what, 20, 22 years back, so my MD asked me, see our systems are so very critical. No. If there is minimum amount of delay, customers will start shouting. Okay. So, have you worked on any critical system? So, I said yes. So, what is that critical system? I said, do you see light? What if my light is not available for systems to work? Yeah, yeah, it's a inducted into the company. So, this is the case of <coughs> what we call as the 5 milliseconds period. Right? If you know every cycle has 20 milliseconds. So conceptually, all of them I will talk about those 5 milliseconds, which are critical to be 
for every data center operator. If you don't switch over in five milliseconds, you have an outage. All of them will go through it. Everybody will watch. Even if you see a blink, that means you pass many seconds in the one hour. So here, the basic part is we will talk more on the operating aspects of data center and power is the critical activity which is necessary for the conjunction of a mission critical system and an hyperscaler. Right? All people sitting here have migrated, whether it's NTT or CT or Equinix, they have started small. Right? And they have grown, and they have grown in such a way that today they are talking about what? He is talking about 450 megawatt, he is talking about 400 megawatt, he will have so many more megawatts to talk. And anyway, he has got, already has so many megawatts, he is a seller anyway himself. So, what are we talking about? We are talking about the first utility of the megawatt data center. We have grown very much megawatts. What does it mean? That today we require input from all of them. To understand. And the first question which I will put to all the audience is we have seen a pandemic, pluses and minuses side. What has happened to the data centers? What was then earlier? What happened during that time? And what is it now? I think each one of you could throw light on to that. And probably we we'll again have a user's view also from uh, uh, GAN. And we have we have a, a sort of heterogeneous uh, combination of people here. So everybody likes their own views. I started with Giris. Giris, yeah. what was your view on that? So, uh, pandemic was a different challenge altogether. So, during the pandemic, we are observing operations, running the operations. It is a critical challenge which every data center has came. And we were worried about how it will go beyond pandemic. But what exactly the change has brought is the digitalization which has came, or which we talk about uh, uh, your UPI based on money transfer and everything. So in SIFI, my almost 25 to 30 percent of the customer base is coming from the banking. And when the banking initially, when they are contracting for one megawatt, we generally look at they will reach up to 600, 400 megawatt as an ultimate capacity. Today the situation is the banking is reaching to 90 percent of the contracted capacity. So that has become a high density requirement. Second thing, if I look from the hyperscaler perspective, so in the hyperscalers, now in the pandemic, uh, we have seen a lot of startups has came, a lot of unicorn has started. They, everybody has started occupying the space into these hyperscalers. So hyperscaler demand is increasing. If we have seen year by year, it is almost going beyond 70%. So requirement of the data center space and power in terms of the density and in terms of the capacity is both the increase in the multiples. So you say that in terms of a the demand, what was there before? So pehle tha usse aaj kuch jada guna bad gaya. Also obviously digitalization has played a big role. Then people have spoken about it in the past uh, so many sessions we had. What's your take on that, uh, Manoj? Yeah, sure. So. Sir has already talked about the digitalization and the pandemic things and all. So yeah, definitely in the past couple of years, the uh, power consumption by the data centers have gone you know, up by you know, a very uh, subsequent uh, uh, level. Uh, couple of challenges like, you know, uh, with this kind of shift, uh, what I see is uh, with the data center operators as well as with the electricity board. Uh, kind of. So you know, especially when, when uh, when these kind of data centers, especially hyperscalers, when they come into uh, a certain hubs, say for example, if I uh, take the example of Navi Mumbai as a data center hub, or for that sake, like talk about uh, Tamil Nadu, Seru Siri, or Ambato, like you know, lots of data center players are coming in a particular region, which is you know creating a, a problem, or not a problem, but yeah, a glitch for the electricity board to provide the power to those companies. So yeah, that that has become a challenge, and uh, due to this, you know, tremendous amount of you know uh, power consumption of power requirement in a particular hub, and that's creating a hotspot over there, and that's the reason the electricity boards are also you know more concentrating on the. Uh, achieving the power factors or, you know, uh, concentrating on the harmonics creation by, you know, the users and all. So, yeah. From a user's perspective, uh, uh, Gandhi, what's your thought on this particular aspect? Especially when you talk about what you had before and in the pandemic and how it's now going. Uh, as a, as a 
this is what we used to be before. I, 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 I think it's slightly different. I will want you to talk about also as a user and also as a service product because you are also a generator. Correct, very true. So pre-pandemic, we were a very orthodox organization. We have everything on premises. So the pandemic actually worked as a catalyst for us where we have to think about moving out and seeing the benefits of the cloud. So uh, we now proudly say that 70% of our load is being shifted to cloud. And we are now looking forward for another 30% to you know, move it in the next one year. And certainly, we are also seeing the improvements in the development, app. like what we are, uh, what we used to handle earlier. And now, the possibilities what are with us. Uh, if we say about the new, uh, the upcoming future, so even now we have, we can see the possibility of moving our very basic functions like CSR and all to a digitized uh, world. We are looking for that. We are not a hyperscale as of now, but yes, we are mission critical. And with the uh, pandemic you know, becoming a catalyst, it really worked for us to adopt the technology very fast. And I believe that is what is happening to many of the big players who are not that big, but they are moving towards the cloud. And uh, as a service provider, what we see that, you know, uh, that was what we were discussing offline as well. At the same time, when they are facing a crunch of power, we are also not generating. There is something which we need to see as a solution. Uh, which may come up in the future, where we can have a you know, win-win situation. Win situation for both the yeah. teams. Mike, what's, what's your thought about Because you, you as a veteran, I have seen you, uh, I have been mean, rather seeing you for many, many years, right? All our gray hairs have gone gray. <laughs> so you, you probably, you probably have, I, I think, someone who can talk about it right from what we have seen probably 20 years back yeah. and what you see now. Yeah, thank you. So, so see, particularly limiting myself to the pandemic, you know, we were caught into two uh, issues, basically. One was the normal operation of our running data centers, but we were in the midst of uh, a very uh, important project to deliver to the customer, which also was you know, very critical to be delivered on time. A lot of you know, high-end equipment was dumped at the site, but people were not allowed to work there. Anyway, uh, we overcame all of that, and thankfully we delivered. Maybe a month late, but we delivered. Uh, what we saw, interestingly, uh, during the pandemic was the utilization of the existing hosters over our hosting with us who went up drastically. Uh, some of them could be linked to the Zoom usage or on, online payments because they are all hosted with us in some other way. And uh, that's what we saw. Uh, and immediately after the, 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 the first wave of uh, 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 the pandemic got over, <laughs> this was a sudden huge jump in, in demand uh, from the hyperscale. And also, you know, people like uh, Gan and who started uh, outsourcing a lot of things on the cloud. So cloud and hyperscale demand jumped up like crazy immediately after the pandemic. Uh, that's what we witnessed uh, as, a, as, a, as a business growth or, you know, of course it translates to power consumption directly. So that's what we actually noticed and observed. Okay. So from a, again, I just want to take the second question to you so that we can go in a round robin manner. You have problems, right? You have opportunities. So I'm sure that part of that time of pandemic, you would have used it. And what are the things, the challenges which you were able to overcome? In what manner? So as I said, uh, you know, uh, especially I'm talking more from a power system perspective. Yeah. So so you know, uh, power is a very important aspect, as we all know, and one of the lifelines of a data center, right? Apart from the network and other things. So one of the challenges we saw, uh, or, or we feared, we didn't ever thankfully face it, was an extended outage during the pandemic. You know, not enough people on site, no refueling guarantees like we generally have. Those were the fears we had. Thankfully, that never happened. But then it allowed us to, you know, review our our PCP and DR plans, and to actually, you know, make them more stronger. And uh, it has made made us so confident now that. We can, can, you know, face any situation is what we feel now. And so you, you anyway have so many data centers now that you really don't have to, nobody needs to bother about a PCDR plan. They would have already created it, rather strategy has created it in such a way that chinta mat kuro, hum aapke saath hai. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did that, but, uh, but you know, we had this challenge of, uh, of uh, power consumption going up, as I said, yeah. during the pandemic. Uh, thankfully, uh, we have designed to have those headrooms. So we yeah, can I, 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 coming to the innovation which you probably have uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. taken, 
but i am you know from a uh, 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 from a data center perspective i would like to ask manoj on his views about what were the challenges and how they were overcome obviously he spoke about some of them anything which probably you would like to add upon that? yeah sure so uh, to talk about the challenges it's it's <laughs> most of the time it's the gap between the uh, power requirement for the data center and the supply of the power supply right? demand gap yeah supply demand gap so i mean uh, if you talk about if you if you see any of the data center operator or any of the you know customer they will keep on they will continuously keep on hammering on the poe factor right so they want to always drop the poe to certain level and all so with the PUE reduction and also we generally talk about three major majorly talk about the three parts the electrical the cooling and maybe you know the space yeah or water yeah so in electrical generally um, and, uh, I mean uh, we speak about the uh, improving the efficiencies of the equipment like for example it may be UPS or reduction in the uh, the distribution losses the uh, higher efficient transformers chillers and all those things. Uh, depending on the customer requirements and if the customer is happy with that, people also do the uh, run the UPS on the BI mode or some people do not provide the UPS at all. So that's the latest trend going on where they have the batteries or the lithium and batteries inbuilt in the rack itself and within these uh, servers also, right? So that's one of the innovative uh, way people are going ahead. In terms of uh, cooling, like yeah, definitely people are going with uh, higher chill water temperature, we are talking about 20 to 28 degrees Celsius uh, or even more than that. In the early days, we used to talk about 7, 12 and something yes. like that. Right? It, it, ASHRAE is anyway so yeah, much yeah. concerned about that. So Definitely. That. And ASHRAE have increased their band as well on the on the temperature yeah. limits. And of course, on the space, the more we squeeze the space, the uh, higher uh, and more efficient the data center becomes uh, with the reduction in the cooling requirements and all. Then we also talk about you know the green solutions, the green walls having the cooler cooling effects and all those things. Yeah. Uh, Girish, what's your take on the challenges and how they were worked out? You know, I I'm, I'm just uh, sort of you know adding to it. We had a discussion about HCI. Uh, I believe all of them were here. Some of them might have gone. So HCI is a lot. But what you are talking about is more than HCI. Everything into one. So in the sense that its complexity, its sort of I would say. Uh, integrity is much more, I would say, complex. Absolutely. Right? So, yeah. probably you could put some light on what are the things which you faced as a challenge and how they were overcome, in what manner. Uh, so, uh, and it could also, and it could also mean anything to do with transmission distribution. That is, that right. is. I actually want to touch on that. See, uh, yeah, in the pandemic period, uh, most of the data center co-location providers has utilized that time better for the planning of the capacity. And why? Because during the pandemic, we have seen two changes. The basic two changes has came. One is work from home policy. I remember that uh, uh, companies like ONGC, who never work with this kind of a system to take the data out into the remote and working from home, they also developed that. So as a data center provider, we were aware that this pandemic or immediately post pandemic there is a huge demand which is going to come so that has proven well second thing is when we started planning during the pandemic that we need to bring the bigger, bigger capacity we have seen two major customers who will be looking for one is the banking infra and second is the hyperscalers but uh, we have uh, uh, planned for maybe uh, 20 30 40 megawatts Whereas after pandemic, we are seeing it is going 100 or 200 megawatts. That is something beyond our expectations. <coughs> now, what is the challenge? The challenge is our infrastructure availability in terms of the power. So the corridor, which we talk about from the uh, national grid to the state grid to the availability and to our data center, there are tapping points where it is becoming as a bottleneck. So just to quote one example, and that's what me and Mahesh was discussing some time before. In Navi Mumbai, the total power or total data center capacity which is coming in next two years is equivalent to 2,650 megawatt. That kind of a booking has happened. Whereas the available power with the Kalwa and for the entire 400 kV bus is actually 500 kilowatt, uh, 500 megawatt, 500 megawatt. So today, actually we are seeing the rationing is happening on the power. 
So what is the challenge we are seeing is the corridor availability, infrastructure availability. Availability <coughs> of a cheap power, that is, I think, is the current challenge what every data center player is facing. Okay. Yeah. Has anybody in the audience uh, seen Kalwa? Okay. Yeah. It's basically full of industries. If I talk about uh, uh, starting from Kalwa going up to Belapur, yeah. you start from Mukund, which is now closed, and I believe MTT is coming up in a very big way. Am I correct? Yeah. And then going ahead, you've got Simmons platform of plants since long So it's an entire industry so It's belt. basically an if you entire industry belt. Total MIDC belt correct. right from one end going up to the other end. Correct. Uh, what I see. In Thane. Still Thane. You talk, you talk from Thane going up to Bela. Bela. Right up to Bela. Anything, anything, anything extra you want to add? You know, IT industry hubs are all those. Correct. So some other jar hai. Or kya? And anybody seen Karwa substation? Uh, even the old industrial estates, everything is there. Correct. Yeah. And anybody seen Karwa and Karwa, uh, you know, listening uh, station? Yeah, I have. So what, what, what do you see? <laughs> you only see cables. Absolutely, right. it's a jungle of cables. It's a jungle of cables, jungle of, uh, you know, uh, switch yards, I would say, to be precise, right? Yeah. It's a jungle of switch yards, yeah. right? And it is probably the biggest switch yard in the country, right? Yeah. And one of the what he is saying right now is four times the capacity. So this is the amount of things which are looking at the challenge, you know? This is another challenge. It's an industrial challenge which people have to get us. But I'm going back to Girish to ask him about what innovation has done to take care of the challenge which is internally sort of... Absolutely. So uh, we discussed on the challenge on the distribution side. But when we come on the consumer or the customer side... Especially so on the innovation part. Innovation part, yeah. yeah. So earlier, uh, the process was uh, the customer used to come and tell that I have a 10 kilowatt drop, 12 kilowatt drop, 20 kilowatt drop. We used to say that you come, sit here, because we are confident that we will use only 50%. But now, we are going into using the tools. That is the innovation we have brought. So before any customer is asking for the high density requirement, we go, we use the tools like CFD analysis, we use different ETAP tools and all, and we create a 3D model or we create a solution model before giving the feasibility to the customer. So that is one part which we have done as a uh, as an innovation. So plan before implementation, which has started in the data center industry now. Okay, uh, Mahesh, can you throw some light because yeah. Yeah, time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the way we see the challenge is one is as uh, rightly mentioned was uh, on the utility side, which is not exactly under our control, right? But we have put enough representations to the state government and right up to the central government to strengthen the back-end infra. Of course, they are not easy projects. They take ages to mature, right? But we are doing our bit, whatever we can. So that's how we are trying to address that. The second thing, as uh, rightly pointed out by Girish, you know, 2,500-odd megawatts has been booked. So it's first come, first serve. So I think that's where we are in this mad rush to construct and take the power onboarded fast so that at least we are not deprived of our requirement. That's one strategy we have. Uh, that's external. The internal uh, challenges or you know, strategy around the hyperscalers is that the usage and density both have increased, right? Usage is definitely 80%, definitely. Anyone pushing 90, I agree with that. So no more you can have that diversity of 50, 60%. That doesn't work anymore. And rightly said, uh, we need to do a proper power flow and load, uh, load flow and uh, you know, CFD analysis before committing. So, so that's, that's one thing. The second thing is how do you actually cater to such demands and densities, right? So some of the innovation is, of course, uh, mostly on the cooling side, I would say, rather, because that's where the maximum challenges and savings and efficiency comes in. So a lot of efforts and technologies are being, you know, tried out, I would say. We are still maybe not 100% there, but we are still experimenting with a lot of things like, you know, uh, uh, cooling optimized, there's a software which a lot of sensors and, you know, a full closed loop system rather than just the BMS, but it actually controls right from the power walls to the chiller compressor. The entire chain is controlled in a very dynamic way to bring about uh, the optimization. That, that itself is a small grid for you. It is, it, it is, it is, it is. It is. Yeah. yeah. So also in the power, you know, it starts out from the basic design and the layouts where you try to optimize the cable runs, the quantity and the run <coughs> length of that, you know. 
and then comes the selection of the equipment which should be five star rated or whatever you call it the highest in the class efficiency i mean and then there is whatever you can do on the operation side to optimize or bring about the efficiency i mean this is how we are kind of you know managing all this uh, power density challenges right now uh, one one major thing which we delivered right now which is live at one of our data centers is the immersion one of our clients opted for it and we put an entire hall of about 4.8 megawatts IT uh, for that client. Uh, that's just a horizontal rack, a 42 u rack takes 40 kilowatts of power. And the entire servers are immersed in a, in a dielectric liquid. It's live now in my data center and uh, I think at that scale it's the first in India at least, if not. I'm sure everybody in the audience will be, they are yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there is a small YouTube uh, presentation of that recently uploaded by the client because I'm not allowed to do it, right? In fact, you will not even know it's in my devices, but that's what it is. Uh, so they have uploaded a small video. I think I can take non compete people to my website, I don't mind that. <laughs> of course, prospective customers are always welcome. So, uh, so another thing is that you know, the same client and one more client is also opted for what we call the direct to chip liquid cooling. And that is one more solution we have implemented for about uh, 3.2 megawatts in one of our data halls. So these are things which are you know, totally client dependent. Well, we know the technology we can deliver, implement it. The client has to be ready to deploy those kind of solutions. It's basically you know, the, it's like this, you know, when people have to be having a fire in their belly, yeah. only those who are interested, for example, when you said direct chip cooling, I've been experimenting with pential coolers. Yeah. I've been talking about pential coolers for the last almost it's not so much so involved because of efficiency. Yeah, yeah. But direct to chip cooling is, is a very good area to measure. Right. Right? I remember in my earlier school days I had to dip the diode directly into oil. It's useful. Any other innovative So just one thing I will add to that. that. Yeah. See, now why we feel that the adoption will be faster and better is for the simple reason the business models have changed. Right? Yes, absolutely. So now everything is tied to the PUE. I mean, the better the PUE, the higher the savings and better the revenues and things like that. Right? right? So now it's imperative for the client and for the service provider both to have a very, very you know, aggressive PUE in that sense. And that's why we feel that that could be a common goal for both of us and that could be a personal option around that. Any, anything on experimental side, what we said of immersion cooling is one of the innovations which we did. Right? See, all of us will use BMS, all these things we will do. But something which is going to be core to the customer, so, so something they can see. I won't talk about the experimental side, what we are doing over here, because I'm not allowed to talk about it. Okay, but yeah, definitely, uh, as uh, Sir mentioned about the uh, liquid cooling, especially when we have the, uh, the liquid directly going into the server racks. Earlier, like you know, the customers were having a comprehension that you know, oh, we can't allow the water coming directly to the racks and all. But now, given the you know uh, demand of the, uh, the the computing, basically, so I would say like you know the uh, the higher density racks actually are good for the you know efficiencies of the data center it actually drastically reduces the PV okay. where we can actually bypass the chillers and you know get into the dry coolers or you know, that kind of, <coughs> kind of uh, technology and then uh, definitely for the uh, hyperscalers or you know very high density when, it, when we talk about more than you know 15 or 20 uh, kilowatt of uh, densities per cap then uh, we also talked about using the ashray allowable range where you know the yeah, the the uh, the air side temperature is raised from like 27 was actually recommended, and it's like 32 degrees Celsius. We are talking about the cold air temperature. So yeah, that's that's what you know uh, most of uh, us are you know going into. Yeah. So obviously, you know, actually, window is dynamic. Yeah, we have seen it starting from 18 degrees, yeah. and it's starting to crunch. It's coming slowly. Exactly. Jitna, jitna acha ho, jitna acha hai. But from that, you know, when take Ashray into account, and uh, you know, today what's happening is we are more concerned about neutrality, carbon neutrality, right? Green energy. <coughs> I'm sure as a service provider, whether it is not only any of the three, but people sitting in the audience also, they will have an eye on that, and rather they not an eye, they have a magnifying glass on that. Kaanse me usko le sakun, kaanse me usko kaise. RDC trading on the energy exchanges, which has been rampant for the last 10 years, it's obviously going very well. But 
as a concept, you know, all of the people have vowed to that, okay, even we have vowed that there would be carbon neutral by maybe another 15 years. Right? Maybe in European Union, they have said that 2030 carbon neutral. Right? Do you feel that we need to take that vow for all of us? A. Two. Can we achieve that or can we not achieve that? How much time we should feel we should take? And three, any initiative which you have taken towards green energy very quickly, maybe in the next a couple of minutes, maybe each one of you are just think yeah. about so that audience can carry something with them, but not only for data centers but for their own. So uh, definitely the very uh, right question he has raised. Because data centers we always see as a power business, the highest density. We are using 60 megawatt, 70 megawatt, 250 megawatt campuses are coming. That increasing the carbon footprint for the data centers. And as a sustainability drive, environment sustainability, we need to reduce the carbon footprint. So every data center player is going ahead with the renewable power. Either it is in the form of solar, wind, or solar, wind, as well as the pump storage, which is the new concept which is coming. So now, solar and wind, everyone is going with the different models, either it is the intrastate or interstate model. So having the capacity built in the group captive or having the capacity built with the captive model and bringing that power into your data center. What are the two advantages everybody is looking at? First is your CUE, carbon utilization effectiveness is coming down. Second thing, your environment sustainability is also improving. And this is something which is coming as a mandate from every customer before he walk in into your data center. Okay. So in CIFI, now we have already signed a 134 megawatt peak is the total power purchase agreements in the group captive. And our 45 megawatt peak is already commissioned and we have started receiving the power. We are going in a hybrid model. But we are now also looking at the different avenues that how I can increase the power infusion into a replacement of conventional to the green. Now what is the challenge we are observing? The first challenge is the state government. Every state government is having a different set of rules. So if I look at uh, let us say uh, Maharashtra, so I can replace only 83% of the uh, total power into the green because in the peak time they don't allow you to replace with the RE power. If I go to Tamil Nadu, it is 67%. If I go to UP, it is only 45%. So still till today, although we are talking about green, but still that need to get penetrated I, across. I use the word as rationed green. Rationed green, yeah. Sorry, I am using it for the first time. Yeah. So uh, from your perspective, Manoj, you know, Equinix is a global player. And you will have not only local efforts as well as you will have both of them. What's your thought on this particular part? A, a green impact and the carbon neutrality. Yeah, so Equinix is, is definitely, you know, uh, we are heading towards the uh, uh, zero carbon uh, for like 2030 and all. Uh, talking about the uh, green energy or the renewable energy, uh, the challenge with most of the data centers uh, across the globe is, you know, uh, most of them are near the metro cities and where, you know, they have the limited land and it's a, it's a huge, uh, dense uh, area where you have uh, higher capacity or high power <coughs> consumption for a small plot of land. So uh, it becomes uh, really difficult or not feasible to have a premises uh, kind of uh, renewable energy, maybe solar or anything like that. So even if you do a solar in a particular uh, site uh, of a data center, it will hardly you know, yield a uh, few kilowatts which will be utilized only for some of the lightings and all. It's like 1% of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the solution or the you know, uh, way forward, what we uh, as a company use is we use the RECs, the Renewable Energy Certificates across the globe. And then definitely there are other instruments which you know, uh, we trade off the energy with the, with the uh, yeah, off-site, yeah, solar and all those things, yeah. Mahesh, you, you are one of the largest players. You have something different and of course on this part, you know, you are definitely growing. Right. So what's your take on the green part as well as the carbon neutrality? Yeah, Especially so, for your group of companies. Right, so NTT as a company has globally committed to go, at least for the data center business, to go net zero by 2030. 
and that's the mandate from the HQ to all our data. So I can expect net data center will be in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so of course, that's with an asterisk mark, you know, conditions apply. <laughs> but anyway, so we are actively working towards that, and uh, it all starts from, you know, site selection, I would say. We go that, that basic uh, and try to reduce the environmental impact right there, you know. Because we do believe that until you do all scope 1, scope 2, scope 3 of the sustainability part, you don't really achieve anything, right? So we are focusing on all three. Right now, of course, the focus is on one, which is directly under our control. And as I said, the minimum we have is a lead gold certificate for all our new builds, right? Yeah. And then, of course, it follows that we use good efficiency units and recycle most of it, and a lot of things go into that thought process. Our aim is to, you know, bring all our vendor suppliers, our OEM partners to to comply with us on the scope three, which is probably a big thing to, to achieve if at all we want to go on net zero. You know? So we are working on that as well. So we really have a holistic viewpoint on this thing and we are too committed to it globally. So I think we are confident to be honest that uh, given the limitations what we may have uh, on the power purchase because as you rightly said, there are various percentages across various states. But we do have power purchase agreements in place across all the uh, data centers we we operate, it could be wind, solar. We also have a 50 megawatt own solar captive, plant, captive, captive solar. plant as well, which we uh, intend to add 54, by the way. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are all doing. Similarly, whatever little on-site generation you can do, we are trying to do solar, but we are also exploring micro grid also. For example, in Mumbai, if we, if we can tap off a gas line and create a gas turbine grid, we are exploring that very actively. So these are the kind of you know measures we are looking at because we need to make it happen. I mean, yeah, yeah, I agree. Twenty thirty net zero is a target, and we are all committed. To it. So I just got a fact from Mathira. I think net zero is a dumb goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, they go mad badly. So uh, you know, from my side at least, uh, I would say that I concluded from uh, the question which I thought uh, was valid for the audience to carry on. I'm sure uh, uh, it will be useful for them. My thought more would be towards uh, what next. So probably in, in the next one year something more will come in and we'll have more responses coming, more projects and uh, probably more initiatives taken towards power efficiency improvements. Yes, we all agree that in the country we have efficiencies, I will say rationing. We'll have rationing on generation, transmission, distribution, interstate for the other location, that WRNDC, NRNDC, and SLDCs typically will never give you what is required, right? So this is the activity which I will request Athira to please write and give it to the uh, ministry saying that this is what we have concluded <laughs> as a part of our program. I'm sure she will do. Very efficient one. <laughs> but this is what probably is the need of the art, right? We need to have an open access which is to be really open. Where when I say open access, it has to be allowing me if I were to transmit 100 megawatt from Gujarat to Tamil Nadu, uh, he could only transmit say 400, so my rest of the college is not available. So thank you all for the session and uh, thank you Vathira for uh, tapping me all the time. <laughs> thank you I so have, much have, for have, questions. Have, uh, yeah. Time for two we questions. Have, yeah, two questions. We have to yeah. have time. <coughs> we have too many hands. Sir, if I go back in time, maybe before five, six years, when we went to some data center players and had a co-location services or some other services from data center. The highest POE which we used to get was 1.7 because you are talking about power here. The directly customer benefits only when it is POE improves. Hey, it's a POE, there are POE players. Today when I go back to them, they still are there only and we have sukun so much. Does it mean that in five years nothing has changed because customer doesn't benefit? So that's what I said, sir. sorry to answer your question, that's what I said, the PU has been drastically reducing across the board, not only me, I'm right. sure all my competition is It's not reflecting to the customer. No, it is, it is. I have not got better than 1.7 okay. in the last one year when I have asked for and before five years I have got the same thing. Okay. So it's that's what, I think, I think, uh, what I will do, is because it is conflicting with all the service providers, okay, let me tell you. PUE as a calculation, it is very drastically different for different companies. All of them will do it differently. But what is more important is, while PUE has improved, I can say that 1.7 is definitely on the higher side. But all of them sitting here, they have got much lower PUE, I can tell you right away. Right? And so if you want, you can talk to them and get 
any improvement possible in that? I would just add here. Yeah. Uh, you are from the banking side, okay? So uh, today, the way the hyperscalers are the new customers are giving the flexible window in terms of the temperature and the humidity. The banking is the only customer is still talking about 50% RH plus or minus 10. Yeah. So when you are not flexible to change your environmental condition, changing the PUV becomes a challenge for us. <laughs> And that is, I know, that is the RBI guidelines. But uh, I think with the new uh, servers, versions, new technologies are coming, I think banking customers also should be flexible on that window. You will definitely receive the better PDV. Thank you so much. Can I have one more question? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this question is to Mahesh Trivedi. So while we are waiting for the liquid immersion technology servers to evolve, in the internet period, are you also looking at technologies like uh, magnetic levitation chillers, which reported you offer 18 to 20 percent lower energy consumption? Yeah, definitely, sir. We are exploring all possible avenues of power saving and improving the PUVs. And uh, but of course, uh, you know, any new technology adoption has its own uh, uh, own uh, restrictions for adoption initially, right? Until it gets matured, either in the technology or in the end user perspective, either it has to get that maturity level. So probably the, if, the, if, the, if the technology is matured, maybe the end user is not yet matured to adopt it, right? And the only way to, to, to accelerate that is, as I said, a monetary benefit, you know. That's how my customers are now adopting the expanded envelope of the, of the ashray graph, right? Because they see uh, improving the PUV and that part, benefit is passed on to them. So if the magnetic chiller passes on that savings benefit to, to the service provider like me, definitely the adoption will be faster. Sir. So while the technology may be there, adoption is always a challenge. Yes. One you. last question. Yeah. One last question. Uh, this is not a question. Uh, actually, we have maintaining 1.4 to 1.5 In fact, what I also want to add, you know, the, oh, it's a question which I will say. See, when you look at the service provisioning part, and on behalf of all of them, when you look at the service provisioning part, when you put in your own servers, and you say, Mera mai jaganunga server you do not select, you do not know ki what is the best server for them, what is your heat dissipation, right? And that is where, especially in bankings, you know, your router, your switches, and your servers, they will always go with the system performance, not always efficiency. So that is where that small change of EV will happen, right? I am also from the same field as you. So I can tell you that it can vary anywhere from today as of now, from 1.48 to 1.4. If you reach by 1.4, you should dance. If you reach 1.48, you should pat on your back. That's it. So you can only get 1.1 if you host your uh, data centers in Shimla. <laughs> or in Himalayas, which is not practical. Just, you will have to see the aspect John there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We can take the questions offline now. Uh, Mr. Tandekar, you will have to choose the best question. Uh, difficult to choose. It all depends on how much gifts you have got. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you have got all the three, I would have given it all the three. But out of that, if I have to choose, probably, you know, tinkering around with, whether it's like, you know, scratching somebody's mind, right? So, the gentleman who asked, Innovations about uh, the questions, innovative questions. Mm -hmm. I would like to give it to you. Can you please add? Can you put your hand up, please? Yeah. Do you think you're going to be able to do it? Do you think you're going to be Can you come up, please? Yeah, can we have you on stage, please? Can we have a round of applause? Can you please announce your name? Uh, my name is Anil Dev uh, from Chima Veneta, uh, Cooling Solution
Congratulations. Thank you, sir.